Good morning. I'm trying to put something together because last night I had a request that came from somebody online and they were asking about the plates that we use to put the timber frame trusses together. And they wanted to know where I sourced them and I had them made. So I put together a little video here. I've been intending to put this video out for a while. I've had the, uh, as you can tell from the video footage that you'll see, I shot this over the course of probably six months. Hello from Breakheart Orchard. We are not on the build site today. I have the day off. I've got a few things I got to take care of this afternoon. But one of the things I'm doing right now is I am cleaning and getting ready to prime the brackets for the post and beam. I picked these up two days ago from the metal shop where I had them made in Richmond, Virginia. It was significantly cheaper for me to have them made than to purchase anything that I found on the internet. Stuff I found on the internet was actually was not as thick and strong as this steel plate and usually ran two to three times as much. So that's a little tip if you're looking at doing something like this, find out what the specs are that you need and look into having them made because you might end up saving a, a, quite a bit of money. I have 80 of these steel plates and they are laser cut, exactly the specs that my architect laid out. <clears throat> and what I'm doing right now is cleaning them with mineral spirits to get all the residue and grit from the cutting off of them. And it, there's a little bit of, I don't know, it feels almost like oil. I really don't know what's on them. I know that a lot of this stuff comes off when you put some mineral spirits on it. So you want to get that stuff off of there, get them clean so that when you put your primer on, it sticks the way it's supposed to. And it's not a part that's going to have a lot of wear and tear. It's just holding some wooden posts together but you want it to look good and you don't want it rusting. You can see these have been cut now for a week. I just picked them up. There's already a little patina of rust on some of them. I'm just wiping away what comes off with the mineral spirits and then I'm gonna put a stop rust primer on it. I'm just using some spray primer and a spray enamel black paint. Again, they are not a high wear item. They're gonna sit still and hold the wooden post together. Turn this to see if it'll, if the video will catch this, but it's got this, uh, I mean, it just looks like almost like sand. It's just metal filings and grit and kind of a slag that gets created when they do the cutting with the laser. And all that junk gets captured by the rag as you wipe it down. The greasiness comes off and they pretty much get squeaky clean, which is exactly what you want. This is the first batch that I'm probably gonna go ahead and prime and then turn after about 15 minutes and prime the other side. It's also kind of windy today, so I'm gonna pick my time as best as possible when the wind's not rolling through on me to hit it with that primer so I don't get any on my car. It's also a good idea to wear uh, rubber gloves when you're doing this because it is just not healthy for you to get all that metal on your skin and to get all that mineral spirits on your skin. Well, I got them flipped over. Got a few more that I set out there since I had the opportunity to get some more set up. Spray these. Of course, the wind is coming like a beast as soon as I start. Pause for a minute for the wind. That's just going to spray everything over the way. Alright, looks like the wind is 
giving me just a little bit of a break. So I'm going to take it. Trying to go light here of this enamel black on these. Whew, my god, that stuff is powerful. That'll kill some brain cells, no question. Well, the wind is blowing so much that grass and leaves are blowing across them into the paint, so I gotta stop. They're all primed, and I put a light coating of paint on some of them. I'm gonna have to go back and clean them, get any debris off of them. They'll require a couple of coats of paint. I expected that, but it's not going to happen on a day like this. I've got to have calm weather. But, looking pretty good. Can't wait to get those posts and beams put together. When those are all up, that will be quite the big day for us. That uh, I would say that is the turning point for the build of the house. Because that's going to be one of the most difficult things to do. In order to put the timber frame portion of the house together, one of the things we needed to do was get some mounting plates and the threaded rod or bolts that are necessary for it. Now, I've tried to minimize my costs as much as possible. I had the brackets made instead of buying them off the internet. I saved a significant amount of money, a couple thousand dollars. I also decided to use threaded rod and what I've done is I have it's got 17 of these left I already cut uh, I'm rather I have 13 of these left I already cut seven of them this is b7 steel alloy these are six foot pieces I've gone ahead and marked them I am cutting them down to 10 inches each so I've got them marked 10 and a quarter inches I am cutting them with a four and a half inch angle grinder I looked at a couple different options of cutting them. I tried a Sawzall at first with a couple different blades. It is a very long process and it was wearing those blades out really fast. It was just no way. It would have ended up costing me a couple hundred dollars in blades probably. I looked at some saws that were available on the internet, chop saws and some other things that I looked at some videos, people using those, the cost of those. I decided I was gonna try and farm it out to a machine shop and when I called a metal fabricator, they said that they run cold band saws and the B7 alloy is too hard on their blades. And the guys uh, at the last place I talked to suggested that if I have an angle grinder, I put a cutoff wheel on it and try that. So I went and got a couple different cutoff wheels, different brands, different types, thicknesses. And what I came to, what worked the best for me was the Diablo cutoff wheel. This is really, really thin. It's only one millimeter. I bought a stack of, I don't know if it was 10 or 20, but that's the most economical way for me to do this. And that ends up costing me less than 40 bucks probably to get the whole thing cut. And that was pretty cheap considering that the rod itself was about $500. Between all the different brackets and things, you run up quite a bit of cost. It's one thing to consider and trying to figure out ways to source the material for less makes a lot of sense because you could easily spend the cost of these up quite a bit. Now, these cutoff wheels don't last a whole long time 
when you're using them, they start wearing out. This is what it looks like when it's brand new. And you can see there's a size difference already. And I've probably only run through one, one rod with that one. They, this, a brand new cutoff wheel will make it to about two full rods. Now, when I do this, I'm wearing eye protection, hearing protection, and I'm covering my mouth because I don't want to breathe any metal particulates into my lungs. As I got going with this, I found that I could do a cut in about 20 seconds. But you're wearing through blades pretty fast, so you're going to spend a lot of time changing blades and standing up to stretch out your back. I'm in that position because I don't want to be throwing sparks all over my feet and my boots, and I don't want to get that stuff all over me. As you can see, it kicks out a lot of sparks. Um, and there's a little bit of, uh, I mean, you can smell metal. I, I put on a long sleeve shirt so I can take it off and be a little cleaner when I'm done. I don't want to wear this all day and I've got a lot of work to do. We're actually going to be putting some posts up today on the build, which we're looking very, very forward to. But I've got to get these things, first off, they're in the way. They're sitting on my porch. I've got to get them cut and to the build site. So that's one rod. I've got 12 more to go. As you can see, I went through a fair amount of that cutoff wheel. I'm going to cut a couple more cuts on this one and then I'm going to change it out. I won't get through a whole nother rod. Um, the more you get into it, the hotter it seems to get because you have the same surface area contacting the, the rod more as it spins. It tends to kick more sparks the smaller the wheel gets. So. I'm going to make a couple of cuts with this one and then I'm going to swap the blade out and see what we got. Now, I went ahead and put on a full respirator because I just didn't like how much smoke was getting kicked up. How much, uh, it seemed like some metal smoke in particular that I could smell it a lot. I don't want that stuff in my lungs. So, I went ahead and put on a respirator just to protect myself. It's a good idea. There's an added advantage that my wife said I look like the villain in Batman. So, we can have some fun with that. Well finished up, I've got all of the rods cut. That was B7 three quarter inch steel threaded rod. So, took about an hour to get the rest of them cut. Probably two hours total cut in time for all 20 pieces that I had. 26 foot pieces. And I saved money by doing it that way. So, you gotta save money everywhere you can doing a house build. It gets mighty expensive. You can gold plate a Cadillac anytime you want to, but if you want to save some money and do something that looks nice, sometimes you got to get a little creative. The way that I did it, I had my plates made, and the reason for it, more than anything, is cost. Cost is extraordinary. If you look online, you're going to start somewhere around $36 a plate for just a very basic 10 inch plate with two holes on each side. I needed 84 of them, so that would have put me at about $3,000.
you can go up from there significantly. I've seen plates that cost $56 a piece, and I'm not talking about the ornate ones that shoot out like four different ways. I'm talking about a basic plate that's designed to hold two pieces of wood together. I paid $771 for 84 plates. The cost of my uh, bolts and my nuts and washers all came in under $700. So my total cost for the steel plate and all my fasteners was under $1,500. Now, I had to cut the rod, that's true, but I saved quite a bit of money because everywhere I looked, the cheapest thing I found for specific timber form joinery for the fasteners started at about 10 bucks and usually, if you were buying in bulk, you could get a price somewhere around twelve to fifteen dollars a piece. For ten bucks, you didn't get something that I wanted to use. I wasn't impressed with it. So, at ten bucks a pop, you're talking about thirteen hundred dollars, almost fourteen hundred dollars, because I needed one hundred and thirty-eight fastening sets. All told, that would have come in somewhere around forty-five hundred dollars to start. For everything that I got, bolts, plates, the whole nine yards, I spent under $1,500 by sourcing my materials differently. And the quality of the materials that I got, I think is superior to what I was finding online. I hope that helps. If anybody's got any questions, just put them down in the comment section. I'll try to address them. Y'all have a good day. I'm going to get out here and start working on this house. You only embrace the darkness. I was born to it.